Uh, as you well know, we had an escape last night from the Bibb County Jail. We have four inmates that are out at large at this time. Uh, those inmates are 52-year-old Joey Fournier, white male, gray hair, blue eyes, five feet, nine inches tall, weighs 140 pounds. He's being held in the Bibb County Jail for murder. Second inmate is 24-year-old Mark Carey Anderson, black male with dreads, five feet, nine inches tall. He weighs 165 pounds. He was being held for aggravated assault. Third inmate is 37-year-old Jonifer Darnell Barnwell. Jonifer Barnwell, black male, five feet nine, weighing about 190 pounds. He was being held for the U.S. Marshals for the uh, uh, for U.S. Marshals for drug charges. The fourth inmate is 29-year-old Chavis Demario Stokes. Black male, black hair, five feet seven inches tall, weighing 160 pounds. He was being held for uh, possession of a firearm uh, by a felon, as well as drug trafficking. We're right now investigating this, uh, trying to piece together what all happened to cause this escape to take place last night. Uh, we do know that around six o'clock this morning that a break in the fence was found in the perimeter of the, uh, of the LAC jail facility. Uh, at that time, uh, they started going backwards to figure out what happened. Uh, they started viewing uh, video footage and discovered that around, uh, right around 3.30 this morning, uh, these inmates uh, were able to leave out from a uh, day room window uh, on, a, uh, on a second floor uh, day room uh, area of the jail. They were able to get out, uh, go through that window, and uh, run out through a break in the fence. Uh, there was some video footage of a vehicle that had been there earlier in the evening uh, that uh, looked like they had been tampering with the fence, uh, as well as uh, bringing some items uh, into the uh, enclosed area of the fence that we believe uh, were used by these inmates to, to escape. Uh, that is why we have a lookout now for this uh, uh, blue Dodge Challenger. Uh, and they, we have a, that vehicle. We, we really have very good reason to believe that that, uh, that vehicle is involved in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, situation. Uh, one thing I want to make clear, whenever we put this out earlier, we let... Uh, Everybody know, I think we got word out to the school system uh, just as a protocol to let them know that we had an escape, but there has been no indication whatsoever that any school or that any of these uh, 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 inmates or any of these escapees have been anywhere around any of our, any of our schools in our, in our area. Uh, right now we are following up on some leads uh, as to where these individuals may be. Uh, and, uh, and going forward. We have our partners uh, in uh, the FBI, ATF, uh, uh, state partners. Uh, all of, uh, this is an all hands on deck situation when something like this happens. So uh, we certainly want people to call in. We have uh, uh, Crime Stoppers, uh, you know, one eight seven seven six eight crime uh, There's been a $1,000 reward offered uh, for information that is uh, uh, that will lead to uh, the recapture of these individuals. Uh, we have also set up two hotlines uh, here at the Sheriff's Office and we'll be sending that out to, for more, but those two numbers are 478-310-4485 uh, and the other number is 478-310-4052. Uh, those two numbers, as well as certainly Crime Stoppers numbers, uh, will be uh, will be staffed 24/7 uh, for anybody that has any type of tips or any kind of information uh, leading to the recapture of, of each of these individuals. So, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to happy to answer. Do you know, do you know how they got into the day room? That's that's what we're looking at. Uh, we have some of our our situations where they can get into the day room. Sometimes the day rooms are not locked. Uh, typically, uh, when they are 
supposed to be in bed. Sometimes the day rooms are not locked. Some of the doors are, uh, are, are where they're not uh, able to be locked, and then sometimes they're not. Typically, that's not, a, not an issue because uh, the inmates are supposed to be uh, at another part of the jail, but these inmates were able to get into the day room and, uh, and uh, work to open up this, uh, open up this window. So we're, all of that's being looked at. Wait, Grant. Well, they could be anywhere. <laughs> uh, any tip, uh, these individuals could be anywhere. We don't, we don't know if they're all together at this, at this point. We don't have any reason to believe that they had any type of association with each other out on the street, but they certainly had some type of association with each other in the jail. So to, to take them to the point to where that they all uh, wanted to escape together, but whether they're, uh, how long they stayed together or even if they're together at this point, uh, we don't know. Or, um, why was the public not notified before 11 20? Well, we were looking at it. We had to backtrack to figure out when it was that this escape happened. If we had had an escape, when it happened, as soon as we knew uh, internally that there was, our investigators were immediately notified, our SRT team, uh, the jail, and the sheriff's office uh, leadership was notified and so we were already following leads even at that early hour and so it was to make sure that we uh, had all the information to get out the right information we had to do a census of the whole jail to make sure that we didn't have any others that were missing or any other places uh, in the facility that might have been compromised but uh, so but make sure we know that uh, as soon as we knew that there had been an escape Internally, there were investigators, there were deputies on the street uh, looking for them as soon as we knew. Any staff disciplinary action? We're looking into all of that. We, right now, our main goal is to get these four individuals recaptured, uh, and any help that the public can give us in that regard will do. Uh, we will look at uh, what needs to be done in the jail setting or, or staffing and that sort of thing uh, going forward. We've already started. Uh, making some staff changes. In fact, the major of the jail, this was his first day uh, being assigned in the, in the correction. So he sort of got a, uh, he got a good wake up call this morning. So, uh, uh, but uh, we have uh, good staff in there. We may make some more changes going forward, but uh, right now my focus is getting these individuals back in the jail and we'll dissect what happened and fix that as we go forward. Grant, I think you had a question. Not as many as we would like. Well, but is it an exact number? I mean, what, what's the adequate there, there was that, There was less than 10 people working in the jail. And how many people detained currently? I'm sorry? How many people do you have detained currently? Uh, a little over 800. And so that's been, a, that's been an issue for us, staffing uh, the conditions of the jail. Uh, we have a 43-year-old jail, and this, is, this happened in the oldest part of the jail the oldest run down this part of the jail. And so that's, I've been talking about we need a new jail, we need a new jail, we have a jail that is falling down on us, that is breaking down. I think there's some, uh, there's some elements of all of that, that that played a role in this particular situation here. So uh, not blaming anything, we're gonna go back and figure out what were the causations of this and rectify those things. But uh, there's never just one one thing that causes something like this, there are several things. Staffing is one of them. But there are things that might could have been done differently as we look into this. Uh, there, there are things that might have uh, uh, alerted deputies as to what was going on that they could have checked into it. But uh, that's all being looked into. We have an internal affairs uh, investigation going into that right now. Uh, but right now, I want to catch these guys. We want to catch these guys. That is the most important thing right now is to get these four individuals back in the Bibb County Jail. What's the normal length of um, I'm sorry. staffing wise? It varies. It really does. It depends on how many people are on, on, on a shift. It depends on how many people. Uh, you have people who call in. We have part-times uh, that come in. Sometimes we don't have as many part-times working 
one shift as we do another. And we, it, it's always a, uh, a, a, a management thing. It's always trying to get enough people on staff. And you can start off thinking you have 15 or 20 people working. Somebody calls in sick. Somebody has to leave. Something happens. So we're going to look at all of the uh, uh, factors that went into the staffing decisions and the staffing levels uh, last night to see what role that played into it. Is that, is that 15 to 20 person number that you mentioned the ideal staffing, or what is the ideal staffing for the night shift? Well, uh, for any shift in the jail, about 30 people. We've not been able to have 30 people in the jail working on any shift in a long time. We're able to do it with less than that. We're able to do it with as few as six or eight people. But when you want an optimum staffing level to have every position covered, it takes about 30 people to do that in the jail. And so uh, uh, that's some of the things we're working on. We get people hired. We have part-timers coming in and, and, and work towards that. But we're going to drill down and figure out what happened last night on staffing levels, uh, any type of notice that might have been given or any kind of information that might have been uh, intel into the, the, the jail and that sort of thing. But that, as I said, that's a, that's a standalone investigation. We're looking into that. Right now, the most important thing is to uh, get, these individuals, uh, get these individuals back into custody. I don't think so. That's it's another one that was in that same general area, but it's not, not the same one, I don't think. So now, Dennis, forgive me if I uh, heard mm -hmm. you wrong. You mentioned they were out there the previous night yeah. and that they had doctored it somehow and maybe even got tools to do it. What time exactly was that? Were they supposed to be out there at that time? Well, no. Th now, that was somebody at the fence tampering with that. We're still looking at the video footage to see exactly what uh, what transpired at that time, but we're we're looking at that to think that they might have been some uh, some tampering of the fence. There were some uh, uh, looks like uh, s some items that were brought in uh, to the fence and then brought over to the uh, closer to the facility, where that somebody could uh, bring them into the jail and then. Uh, uh, use those items maybe to help uh, uh, hasten their escape. So we're, we're looking into all of that right now. But that's where that blue car comes in, and that we we have that on the video, and we've sent that uh, picture of that vehicle out uh, in lookouts, and uh, anybody in the public that might know something about that would be uh, very helpful to us. Is there any relation here to the break-in through the gate a couple weeks ago? Not sure. Uh, I'm not going to rule anything out right now. That other time might have been a, a test in the system to see what might happen. Uh, but we had uh, uh, done some things to remedy that that hole in the fence and where they had gotten into the uh, 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 jail facility and uh, at that time. But uh, but we, we don't know. Anything's on the table right now. <laughs> if that wasn't clear. No, it wasn't, no it, it wasn't very far, but right, right on it. But we were pretty close. I got, I got more. Do you know who the blue car was owned by? If I knew that, they'd be in jail right now. <laughs> uh, on that same vein, um, are the plot cameras in operation yet? I know we talked about that before. No, the... The flock cameras here in Bibb County are not up and running yet, but there are flock cameras in every county around here, and we are accessing that database. Uh, we do have cameras here uh, in in Macon that we are using that we're looking at to see if we can, uh, and, and some of those cameras have been able to show us a little bit of information that is, that's been useful to us. So we're, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to compile all of that data and get all of that uh, uh, all of those images, and we're hoping that uh, anybody that might have seen something real early this morning, because there's not that many cars out, uh, this this blue Dodge Challenger is sort of a unique looking vehicle. If you've seen the, the picture, it's kind of a sky blue uh, uh, vehicle. So if anybody's seen that, uh, we certainly would like to uh, like to talk to them. Um, 
is there anything that people should do tonight? Lock their doors, check their sheds. How can people stay safe? Well, be prudent, obviously. Uh, if you see something suspicious or, or, or uh, hear of anything suspicious, certainly look. If you uh, hear somebody rumbling around in your shed or in your uh, garage, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to call, have some deputy to come and, and check it. But uh, typically in these types of situations, they've already planned out uh, getting out, and they probably have somebody on the outside that has been waiting for them, so they uh, may or may not even be on the, in this area. Uh, there's nothing to indicate to us that they're still on foot anywhere near the jail. I mean, we've had escapes in the past where they, we catch them within a block or two of the facility, but uh, in this particular case, uh, we've not, uh, not had any indication of that. We've canvassed the area all around uh, the, uh, the LAC and have not, not found anything. We're not sure. We saw the car. Uh, we saw them run away. The car was in the parking lot, and then it left. Then we see the inmates uh, escape. Uh, so we don't know if they got into that car, maybe got into a different car, or, or what have you. So I can't put them right back into that same car right now. But we would sure like to talk to the person driving that car. Just quick clarification. Mm -hmm. the, the time between 6 a.m. and Uh, we, we had an idea who was missing fairly closely, but that's just jail protocol. When you have an escape, you, you canvass the jail. But all while that is going on, we have our SRT team, our investigators, all of those individuals out already looking uh, because this, uh, each one of these are, are, are you know, charged with some pretty serious crimes. Uh, and one of them, the, the, the uh, uh, Barnwell, uh, just was uh, sentenced to uh, life in prison in the federal system. So uh, he probably has some incentive to want to get out of jail. So we were familiar with all of these individuals and following leads, trying to figure out where they might be. So it wasn't like we were sitting on our thumbs. We were working within the sheriff's office and investigative and looking into jail. But we wanted to make sure that we had all of the information to give out in a you know, get, get the right information out. I'd hate to say, okay, at one time we thought only one had escaped. Then we did this, uh, as we sensed us to jail, once we looked at the videos that we had, we realized we had four. Then we had to make sure we verified which four it was, which ones we were. So we want to get all of those facts. But we were out on the street searching and following leads all during that time. Do, uh, when deputies are working the jail, do they do like they do in a prison setting periodically? Yeah. Do they just yeah. they're constantly updating? They're things? supposed to count uh, at every shift, but when this happened, it was between counts, obviously 3.30 in the night. They're supposed to be asleep. Uh, that's not when they, they should do, be doing block checks and that sort of thing. We're looking at when block checks were done, all of that. That's, as I say, that's all part of the internal investigation that you're doing for the jail. Uh, this is sort of like if a, if a water pipe bursts, First thing you want to do is to stop that water flowing. Well, we've got an inmate jail burst. If we want to catch those inmates right now, that is our first priority. Uh, the jail, we, we have the jail on lockdown as much as we can with the facility as it is. Uh, and so uh, we want to capture these inmates and get them back in a secure facility. And then we'll deal with uh, whatever other factors that uh, contributed to this, uh, to this, uh, to this escape. But you, ha you have to remember, there were four, it, four people who decided they did not want to be in jail, and they made effort and made, uh, uh, you know, uh, made, uh, uh, made, made things happen to where they were able to escape. And so we want to get them back in, and then the things that uh, we need to fix on our end are the things that uh, contributed to this thing, uh, staffing, the jail facility, the the, 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 the building itself, all of those kinds of things are, will be looked at. And so they're being looked at now, but uh, right now I want to catch these folks. So you talked about when the press release went out, but I want to take it back. Um, what time did you guys tell the school system what was going on and when they went on lockdown? 
What time was that? What time did y'all call the school system? I know that was. I know it, but somebody from the. It was about nine or ten o'clock that they were they were notified, and we did that as just as a, as a, as a protocol to let them know, we've had escape, and 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 then we didn't you know, certainly as being a partner in the uh, in the community, let them know of what's happening. Uh, there was not any kind of indication that any of these inmates would even be around the school at all but just to let them know and then they have their set of protocols that go into play uh, whether it be a modified lockdown or wh whatever they do that's that's their protocols that they followed once they got this information but but let me be clear there's no indication uh, even at the beginning or now that any of these inmates were ever around any school Pretty much the same. We had said we had four escapees, uh, and that they, we kind of gave them a general description of what we were looking for, uh, and that was as we were getting everything out to send to the to the media, and so it's all kind of working at the same time. Uh, yeah, the school system. We're gonna call them a little bit quicker and let them know, and then send out the, you know, send out the press release. I mean, look, we want to let y'all know as fast as we. I mean. As soon as we found the, 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 the hole in the gate, we should have called the media and said, hey, we found a hole in the gate. And then y'all going to want to know, well, did somebody escape? Well, we don't know. Hold on. What happened? How many escaped? We don't know. So we had to get all of our information together so that we had a complete picture of what happened so that uh, <laughs> so we let you know. And, and so I know that... Uh, you know, we, we, we like to get it out, but we, while at the same time, our investigators were already on the street, our SRT team, uh, and, and you never know, we might have caught a break and caught one or two of them, all of them, in that, in that, in that interim time. But uh, the indications are they have uh, gone away. I don't know if they've gone from this area. Uh, a couple of them have contacts outside of the middle Georgia area, so we're certainly following up on that. That's where we have the U.S. Marshals, uh, you know, the Southeast uh, Regional Fugitive Task Force. We have the FBI. Uh, we have all types of, uh, uh, of different uh, uh, technologies and tools that we're using to, uh, to follow up on this. And I feel, uh, feel comfortable that we'll be getting leads. We've been getting leads so far, and we'll continue, continue to get them as we go forward. Well, they're supposed to be that. Uh, but we're looking to see what happened last night. There should have been somebody that heard some tampering, and there's some indications that somebody might have, and we want to make sure that what was followed up on it. But you can guarantee that there will be a heightened vigilance uh, on, uh, on what goes on in the jail going forward. I mean, we always, uh, in that, we know that there have been some things that we needed to shore up. Uh, you know, the jail's been in the news lately. The, the, the conditions in the jail, the, the neutral oaf, and, and that sort of thing. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe they got tired of eating neutral oaf. I don't know. But, uh, but that's, uh, that's part, of the, part of what we're looking at in the jail uh, to see what we need to do to, to, to fix that so this doesn't happen again. No, not in that. Not in that way. No. Uh, no. Uh. All right. Let me give you those numbers one more time. You got. Certainly, Crime Stoppers, 
one eight seven seven six eight crime. We have uh, the chairman of uh, Macon Regional Crime Stoppers, Warren Selby, here. Thank you for coming, Warren, and kind of showing support uh, and 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 doing that. Uh, but we have Macon Regional Crime Stoppers, one eight seven six eight crime. Get a thousand dollars reward. Also, the other numbers are four seven eight three one zero four four eight five, and then four seven eight three one zero four five zero two four five zero two and I know the FBI and some others are getting up some reward money and if uh, once we know how much that is and what what that's going to be we'll be sending out a, a release on that on that very soon plus we'll be sending out another flyer uh, uh, to everyone that kind of has their pictures and has the information and that sort of thing and it has these uh, these uh, hotline numbers on it also Sorry. I would I would think that anybody who's escaped from the jail with some of these charges would be somebody that probably does not want to go back to jail, and that uh, anybody that would want to try to uh, stop them uh, a civilian or somebody that uh, that is not uh, ready to fight probably would just best to call one of these hotline numbers and let us uh, let us deal with them because. Uh, these are they are charged with uh, some serious crimes. Uh, three out of the four have been in our jail uh, several times before. So, uh, yeah, I would I would consider these uh, these individuals to be a, 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 a little bit dangerous. Yeah, sure. That's something that we're looking into. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to stand up here and be so naive as to think that there's not cell phones in the jail and the cell phones may have not played a role in this particular escape. There's not a jail in Georgia that doesn't have cell phones in it. There's not a, there's not a prison in Georgia that doesn't have a cell phone in it. And so what, to what level that type of communications played in this escape, uh, in this escape we're going to we're going to drill down into that uh, and so uh, so so yeah do you have an estimate of like how many you think are in there i wouldn't venture to guess i would say more than two and less than 50. I don't, there's no way to know I mean, ask a ask a prison warden how many cell phones are in his facility or, or whatever i mean uh you don't know every every week uh, our deputies are doing uh, shakedowns and searches in the jail and they're finding cell phones. If you remember just, what, three weeks ago we arrested uh, 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 one of our part-timers for bringing in cell phones and other contraband items. So uh, it's always a cat and mouse game uh, with contraband and cell phones and that sort of thing in a, in a correctional facility. <laughs> 